companion in all the case on ceremonial journeys, Mrs. Kennedy returns from Capitol to White House, there to join the gathered dignitaries for the procession to St. Matthew's Cathedral. Amid tolling bell and the bagpipe's dirge, black veiled like some ritual figure of classic myth, Jacqueline Kennedy follows her husband's coffin on foot, leading the greatest assemblage of world statesmen to pay homage in half a century. St. Matthews, brought by car, the children join Mrs. Kennedy. Today is John John's third birthday. Across the land, a great silence falls. Trains halt. Planes wait on the runways. All traffic ceases. The hush streets become open chapels. For five minutes, in cities all over America, people pay silent tribute wherever they may be. In phrase and cadence which speak of the oldest mysteries, of sacrifice and judgment and promise of life eternal, Cardinal Cushing intones the Requiem Mass. Rooted in man's beginning and his ancient search for conciliation with death, it is spoken for the dead, but addressed to the living. Around the earth, like a great murmuring concourse, other men also pray. In many lands and languages and religions, in public ritual or in the heart's private stillness, they mourn the young president who had sought to make reason and peace prevail.